Hey everyone, how are you doing? Uh, we are back. We are now Diamond Tier 1 in the home stretch on the Road to Mythic um, with our trusty White Weenie standard deck here. Um, so, Mono White Aggro. Again, just to briefly go over the list, um, I, I have this in a previous video. Um, but basically, I think I made one minor tweak where I added a citizen's arrest um, as kind of like the fifth borrowed time. So if you want to go over the deck tech, check out the earlier video uh, on my channel. But we're going to get into some games here and very excited to get some more experience with this deck. Okay, great opening hand. Uh, no two drop, but we've got one and three. So certainly happy to keep this. I'll basically keep any two or three land or even four land hand for the most part. Okay, up against Rakdos Control or mid range. So here we're going to drop Bank Buster so that next turn we can play Peacekeeper and activate and bash in. Have a look and see what he's got going on. Okay, Invoke seems like a great target, I guess. Well, Inferno Grasp also, because you can just use that to get rid of our guy. So I think we just go for Inferno Grasp here. Yeah. Seems great. And we're on a little bit of a clock here to kind of get moving before those Invokes come down. And I guess he just taps out. Yeah, I really like the new version of um, kind of this Mana Denial guy, the anointed uh, Peacekeeper. He's like a stand-in for the 3-1 flyer, but I think the extra toughness is huge and vigilance is just great. So, yeah, this hand is a little weak, but happy to keep it. We've got a 1 2 3 drop. Yeah. 22 land feels right for this deck. Um, our curve, like, I really want to have at least 14 2 drops, which we do have. Um, we have 13 3 drops and 4. Four drops and then seven one drops. Anyways, we're happy to trade here. I doubt he'll make the trade. Haven't seen this deck for a little while. I think the, uh, the current version runs a lot of the exile effects with, um, I don't know if they have like borrowed time, but they have, they have similar type, I think like, um, oh god, I can't think of the name of it, but um, the two mana version for, for a uh, permanent with um, 
and across through your last circle of something. Anyways, um, we're actually happy to trade with this, I think, because we can just specialist and get it back. So, you know, we're not bashing in, but I think I'm fine with this. This is definitely an annoying threat that I want to get rid of. Oh, I suppose I could save it for a little later to try to get the extra value and maybe just go announcement here. Announcement is a little bit weaker in terms of damage output, but if we can get to like five land, this becomes a lot stronger. So I think I'm okay with that. It's a little bit of a slow roll, but overall, I think it's pretty good. Okay, Weaver of Harmony is definitely a problem. Okay, we're kind of going to telegraph here a little bit um, by attacking with our mechanic, but that's fine. Alright. And we just... Uh, Sit and then Emperor. Definitely telegraphing that we have it, but that's fine. Okay. Guess he wants to get announcement probably. Yeah. And then copy it on our mechanic maybe. Now we can Wandering Emperor and get Weaver of Harmony, which seems good. So, I guess we can attack in first problem is that leaves this guy open. Um, so I think we just play this out and then just get the extra pump. And it's fine. So we'll extraction specialist, bring it back, pump it up. And then now we can, um, I think we want to plus maybe our adverse, well, no, not our, excuse me, our specialist maybe. I guess if they get rid of this, well, we still have adversaries, so that's maybe fine. Um, yeah, I guess we build the specialist up a little bit. We could diversify, I suppose. Time feels pretty good. Um, I really don't like their weaver. I think we need to get rid of it. I don't love the fact that they have life like with naturalist and it makes everything cheaper. Um, but weaver is just so nasty. So I think we have to get rid of it. I suppose we could also borrow time on the borrowed time, which is kind of interesting. Then we get the effect of wedding announcement and hotshot mechanic. That's kind of interesting. Um, we draw like an extra card. I think I'm just going to take Weaver and keep it simple.
Yeah, and I guess we're too deep in the tank and they just got bored and tapped out. So two Owen matches. That happens surprisingly often. Like we're just thinking about a play, a different line, and the opponent will just concede. I don't know if they just don't think they have a chance or just get bored or who knows, but at any rate. Okay, so it could be mono black control. Not really sure what we're up against here. The list that I've seen doesn't usually run duress, but it's probably mono black control. Well, that sucks. Um, I guess we just set. So now he's gearing up for a meat hook for two next turn, most likely. Which means um, we should play Peacekeeper, because he can't use Cut Down to stop it. And then we can make it be more expensive. But first, let's get in for some damage. So here we're going to anointed for meat. Meat Cleaver Massacre, and there it is, exactly as we expected. I didn't expect Four Swamps to go with it, but that's fine. So this is going to be pretty nice. Give us a little bit of time. And we can use Borrowed Time to start pushing, hopefully get them a little bit out of range. If he has removal, it's awkward. Yeah, no blocks. No, thank you. Steep in the tank, so I guess he has the removal. That's too bad. Um, luckily, we have another Peacekeeper. I guess that works for another turn. So we can keep him off it for one more turn this way. Yeah. All right. See if we can dodge removal for another turn. Infernal Grasp or March or something like that. Most lists don't run March, so I'm a little surprised to see it, but it's a perfectly fine card. So now he's digging. Okay, that's a good sign. Means he hasn't got it. very soon. Okay, so now we can grow them just barely out of range, which is good enough for now. Uh, what else have we got here? I guess we can citizens arrest that thing. That feels pretty good.
So now he can leap cleaver for two. So we have another turn to push. Now we get to have our initiates out of range. He can get Peacekeeper, but that's fine. Um, I don't think we're playing anything else into it because we're just walking into Weak Cleaver. So I think we just set. And now he can meet Cleaver for three. But that's game. Yeah, as peacekeepers. Great. Okay, 3 0 in matches. And definitely playing Guardian because we can't trigger initiate with the rest of the reinforcements. Okay, so if they haven't got Bankbuster or Tenacious Underdog, then it's probably Infernal Grasp. They could have cut down the initiatives. So I don't really know what they're holding. Maybe nothing. I guess we just set. So reinforcements gets a little more damage, but it does walk us directly into Meat Cleaver Massacre. And they should be able to massacre for three next turn. So I'm a little loath to play this right now. Um, like it pushes the clock. We swing in for six, which is nice, but we're basically giving him a three for one, which I don't love. So I think we actually just sit here. Feels a little awkward, but I think it's the right move. It feels so tempting to just play the card, but he is telegraphing Meat Cleaver. And now we can use this to dodge, or at least partially dodge the Meat Cleaver. Okay. Well, if he wants to use Cut Down, that weakens the Meat Cleaver. Or makes it sort of more redundant. The thing that I've definitely started to feel against like Mono Black is you've got to slow roll it. I'm not accustomed to slowing down the beat down, but it does seem appropriate sometimes. Okay, so now he can make that thing and do a 3 3 death touch, which we don't particularly care about. Um, it's not worth bard timing. I'd rather just get Adeline going because Adeline, let's see, he can, if he has another land, he can, he can still get Adeline with Meat Cleaver next turn. But I do want to get, I want to push damage here. So I think, is it right? Um, I guess we could just like, the other possibility is just like wedding announcement and sit. 
doesn't feel super great. Like if he doesn't have meat cleaver, then we're at least pushing this way. I think I'm okay with it. Um, Cause he'll have to kill his own sleeper. So that's okay. Oh, you know what I just realized? Um, we actually can't attack here. Never mind. Um, yeah, because I, I thought we could enlist, but we can't because it does has summoning sickness. So that was maybe not great. Yeah, maybe wedding announcement there would have been better. I guess now we're just walking into meat cleaver. But luckily he can't also keep this thing alive. So he meat cleaver is for four. He's now probably trying to think of a way to get us to activate our bank buster so he can get everything. Cleaver for four. He may not have it. Um, I guess now we just borrowed time. Seems fine. Like, if he has Meat Cleaver, it's still a beating, but otherwise, we're just wedding announcement. And then. So he has six mana. He could make this a five five. Yeah, I think we have to borrow time this thing. So he's gonna get some cards out of it. I think now we are going to enlist here just to set up the scries. We miss out on a damage that way, but that's okay. Um, yeah. Oops. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, just like that. So, if he has meat cleaver, I'm assuming it's coming down now. But the lovely thing is that if he plays meat cleaver, we can then play adversary, activate and swing for five. So it won't kill him because he's gonna get some life here, but it'll be nice. All right, so he goes to eight. We drop adversary. Now, I guess the other consideration here is we could have dropped Adversary and Enforcements just to play around Liliana, um, which is actually, I mean, unless he has like another Meat Cleaver. So it's, it's, it's good one way, bad the other. Probably more likely that he has Liliana now, so maybe we should have just played Adversary without pumping it. I guess he didn't have Liliana. But it's like, it's a play he could easily have. Um, all right, so now, 
I guess we could play reinforcements and then use that to activate and shove. And then we force block here, unless he has removal. And I guess if he has removal, it's, it's not great, but I think that might be the play. Because otherwise, like, we're not forcing lethal. So I think we enforcements here, reinforcements. And we use this to crew. And now we're forcing, okay, so I guess he had the removal. Sure. I think we use Adeline to push through. So even though it's like mana inefficient, it's better to have Adeline first. Okay, there's Bank Buster. This guy is so busted. Shieldred is just like single handedly putting him back in this game. That's why we have all those borrowed times and whatnot. Like, that is the reason. Now, if he's stupid enough to attack, we can kill him with Wandering Emperor. But he's not that silly. He knows better. We don't really have time for wedding announcement. I think we need to get Wandering Emperor going. Is that better? Not. I'm not convinced that it is. Um, yuck. Yeah, I think we just said. Actually, no, we can't. Ah. Forgot he was going to flip and then be even more. Yeah. <sighs> Keep forgetting this thing flips and then it's just nastier. And this card is just nuts. This card is completely broken. Should not have. Should not have been printed like this. Uh, yuck. Meat hook for one. Yep. to sack the other Wandering Emperor just to get rid of this thing. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. 
We need the life also. Good God. Yeah, these gluttons. Like, he's gained probably 14 life off this thing and done, like, 6 damage. Like, this card is nonsense. Total nonsense. And, unfortunately, I think we're... Ugh. If we just make a like a samurai, is that does that even do anything? Like he can definitely just kill it next turn. It's like how do we get back into this game? I think we just get the samurai going. Like it's so not great. Oh, as we force him to come after it, but like we don't have any presence. I think we just need. I think we just take the samurai. I'm never done for good. May your He's just got it all. All right, so three and one. Shield Red is the card to beat. And I think most seasoned players will probably not put children out until the very end. So, like, waiting until all of your removal is gone and then just drop it. Because it does so much work. But I think most decks only run children as, like, a two of. Maybe a three of. I think that is... It's definitely the most powerful card that was printed in this set, and I don't think it's close. Like, it's warped the entire format just by being printed. So we're up against, I think, the Mono Blue Tolarian Terror slash Haughty Gen deck. Um, and it's had, basically it's um, a lot of counter spells. So I think we, we get in first and then see what he does. He does not have sweepers, though. So I guess we, we could play Nubinalia. He, he, I mean, whatever we play here is probably getting countered as a real, is a real answer. So this is kind of a slow roll. It's mana efficient. It's probably getting countered. Yeah. I guess we could have played this to try to be able to get hopeful in a sheep going.
But yeah, it is mono counter until he's able to drop one of his threats. Um, I don't know if it runs Fading Hope. Like, I'm considering using Emperor to pump one of these guys so we can get Initiate moving. It's like, Paragon is so bonkers that I want to make sure that it doesn't get countered if we can possibly avoid it. So I think that might be the move. Just go Wandering Emperor main phase. Okay, he's got the negate. I suppose we could have just attacked him and done it like on his end step as well. It's a little less damage, but it would have been a bit cleaner, so that's probably better. See, I'm so used to thinking like an aggro player, like you just have to beat down. That playing like this slow roll control game is, is so alien to me. He's gonna have to drop his hot agent here pretty soon. Probably has another counter spell here. Yep, there's the counter. The nice thing is that by doing the counters, we're, we're, we're not allowing him to draw extra cards. And now we can try the Citizen's Arrest this thing, which he might also have a counter for, but. We, I mean, we gotta eventually land something here. Yep, and there's the counter. So we're not pushing. Now he's gonna try to sit back with Jen. But hopefully he's almost out of gas. Yeah. Five counter spells and counting. Be quite ballsy for him to get aggressive here. All right, here we go. So he could have like shore up or slip out the back a number of different options for fading hope. Or even March of Swirling Mist. Lots of options. Yeah, there is March of Mist. Okay. I don't think he can recur anything, but just in case. We also shrink him, which is nice. The other nice thing is when we attack with the hopeful initiate during declare attackers, we can actually make this unblockable. because so we'll have three different power. And then we can shrink his gin even more. Oh, fun.
And I do think it's worth it to suicide the initiate in for two damage off of these guys, just to be able to get the guaranteed hit off the sentinel. That way we can hit him for five, get him down to two. So he's probably looking for enough mana to cast a serpent. And I think he, he can definitely do that. He probably has like a haughty gin in hand or something like that, I would assume. There's the fading hope. Guess the question is, does he think he can kill us in two swings? Well, I certainly hope not. things. He could definitely, he could get there. Two more spells in the yard. Okay, that's that's not good. That's probably it right there. <sighs> yep, and that'll do it. So basically just mile counter until they can drop a gin. I think we're three and two at this point. Um, we'll do more games a little bit later, but thanks again for watching guys. Um, if you like the channel and want to support it, um, please consider subscribing or liking the video. So I will see you guys next time.